Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, I really want to talk to you guys about some very interesting rumors that have been swirling around for RDNA 5 and perhaps some clarity on the compute unit shader situation. Now, for those of you who missed it or are not quite aware what's been going on, um, for quite some time, AMD have, of course, stuffed two compute units into a single workgroup processor. But the rumor is that this is going to be changing with GFX 13, also known as RDNA 5 or UDNA or whatever the hell AMD decides to call it. Although that's not quite technically accurate because these changes have also uh, are also being implemented with the MI series of GPUs as well with GFX 12.5. Uh, but in this video, I want to focus on the gaming side of things. Now, uh, Kepler L2 did leak that, of course, this is going to be happening, and also uh, some diagrams of the GPU and many of the specifications. Again, if you want more information about this in depth, you can check out a video from a couple of days ago, but I will c cover some of this stuff in courtesy in this video, just to give you some context. But first of all, uh, the confirmation seems to be from a very well-known leaker, Zhao Zhonghao, and this is from the Chip Hell Forum. I want to give credit here to WCCF Tech where they spotted this, and basically speaking, the next generation of GPUs does indeed seem to sport uh, compute units. The um, translation, because this is in Chinese translated, the structure has changed. One compute unit is 128 SP shaders or streaming processors whatever you want to say which is not much different from the previous 192 compute units this is in answer to someone who said 96 cu is still too small didn't the full version leak that was 192 cu and the consumer version is at most 154 now just to give you guys a little context on this there has been a lot of discussion of what the top end variant would be i had previously myself heard that the consumer version would be smaller but i've been given multiple figures so at this point it's possible that people are just simply getting mixed up amd have changed information or simply as the sources are wrong it's really difficult to know uh wccf tech do a nice job of breaking down what this actually means so 96 compute units which basically would be the equivalent of 192 compute units in rdna4 language for example that would be 12288 cores we have 40 compute units 5120 24 cu 3072 and then of course 12 cu is 1536 i'll not go super in depth into the previous information but the highest end is 80 this is split across um, eight shader arrays which further are split into 16 shader engines and each of these uh, shader engines sports uh, six compute units so basically you're multiplying the 16 by six and then obviously as you're drilling down further and further and further things change a little bit for example 40 compute units of 82 would feature five um compute units per SE and so on and so on. But this would actually be accompanied with a 512-bit bus. So theoretically speaking, there's an absolute crap ton, that's a highly technical term incidentally, of memory bandwidth, which is available here for the GPU. And I will be really interested because um, from what I'm hearing, uh, basically speaking, AMD seems to be really confident uh, with its data center products in particular. I know that its design teams and you know just everyone actually working on these things are absolutely just burning the midnight oil. That's not to say that NVIDIA's teams are not doing the same thing as well, by the way, but AMD seems really confident that uh, it's going to have something pretty special. And the reality is I also wouldn't be surprised if that is the same thing for the next generation of AMD graphics as well. I truly believe that they're going to be really impressive because obviously Microsoft are collaborating with them in the next generation of Xbox, Sony as well. And uh, I think these things are going to be super efficient and super powerful. The question is what NVIDIA will do in response. Like I've said in a previous video, the, there is like a reality of there is only a certain amount of wattage that you can cram into a specific, you know, GPU. I mean, what are you going to do? Put like 900 watts into the thing? You know, it, it, you just kind of get to a point where there's only a certain amount you can do with a certain amount of cooling. Um, regardless of the processor you're using, it's like, what, 3NM probably for the next NVIDIA gaming GPUs. And further to this, <clears throat> um, there's only a certain number of comp um, compute units or uh, CUDA cores or what have you can cram in. 
because obviously different things on the GPU are scaling differently. So for example, uh, cache and that type of stuff typically scales not quite as good as uh, you know compute logic. <laughs> Although the scaling even for compute logic isn't exactly brilliant anymore, but that's beside the point. So there is one last thing I want to cover before I close out the video, and that is software-defined super cores. Um, this is actually a patent which is currently on uh, Google, and a couple of people sent this to me all the way back on Friday, but it was quite late after I finished doing other stuff, so I just didn't really get to it. Regardless, the best way of describing this is pretty much the rumors that we've been hearing for Royal Core. Now, if you don't know exactly what this is, I will, of course, drop a link to this um, patent in the video description. But long story short, what essentially happens is that multiple cores can come together to essentially be almost like a super core. And this would enhance single thread performance. One way to think about this, and it's not 100% technically accurate, but uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of like hyperthreading or SMT. So, for example, resources of a single core are essentially split up, so one physical core can handle a couple of different threads, right? Um, and obviously the purpose of that essentially is to maximize the usage of that particular processor core. So if you have, of course, multiple integer integer units and floating point and all the other crap that makes, you know, a, G a CPU core do stuff, what you want to do is keep that pipeline as fed as, as uh, possible. And so obviously speaking, um, SMT is one way to do that. This, on the other hand, is a little bit like kind of the reverse what this is basically doing um is essentially taking a processor sorry taking a thread taking a set of instructions and then splitting them up into smaller instructions and then essentially splitting them up across multiple processor cores i am missing a lot of the technical details here because i am trying to keep this a little bit simpler but it's really interesting because in theory anyway you could have let's say two cores fused together to make um, like a super core or perhaps even more processor cores. Now, the bigger question is, is this going to be part of Nova Lake? The answer is no. So anyone who's telling you this is Nova Lake, I've got bad news for you. It's most unlikely, well, first of all, that's assuming this ever becomes a product because a patent is not necessarily a product. So that's one thing to put under your, you know, your little thinking cap. The other thing is I'm hearing that this is most likely a 2027 or maybe even a 2029 kind of product. Um, the thing is, Intel have just had so many kicks in the shin. <laughs> it's like, at this rate, if a processor actually launches, it will be impressive. I do think that um, Intel will probably do reasonably well with Nova Lake. Um, I'm hearing that the E cores in particular with Nova Lake are pretty good. The P cores, you know, they're decent, but the E cores apparently are doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, and so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Nova Link. Uh, one of the um, head honchos over at Intel, I've forgotten their name, I'm sorry. Um, they essentially said, yeah, we kind of know that Arrow Lake missed the mark against Zen, but um, we are much more confident <laughs> with uh, Nova Lake. So whether that's coping and seething, we'll have to figure out, I guess, in like a year's time. Um, personally, I, I do think that they're going to do quite well with Nova Lake. But uh, ultimately, we'll have to wait and see. With that said, guys, apologies for not being on camera for this one. But uh, yeah, I uh, just kind of am doing a few bits and pieces. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.